During the summer, between my junior and senior years of high school, I had a job at my local cinema. I'm 26 years old now and well on my way to another more important things in my life. This is the first time I have told this story. Mind you, the feeder was very small since it was located in the small town where I grew up in, North English, Iowa. Population was just over a thousand. This made things easier for me since one of the jobs I had to do sometimes was clean up the feeders after each film was over. Unlike some cinemas in the bigger areas that have upwards towards of 20 feeders, this one only had five. The cinema was almost perfectly semi-medical. Once you give your ticket to the ticket taker, another job I was given sometimes, the concession stand is in front of you. There is a hallway to the left, south hallway, and another one to the right, north hallway. The hallway to the left had three feeders once you walk down the hallway. Feeder 1 is on your left, 2 is on your right, and feeder 3 is straight ahead. The hallway to the right, on the other hand, just had two feeders. Feeder 4 on your left, and feed your five on your right. Instead of your just bird feed your directly ahead of the south hallway, there is nothing but a giant Pepsi advertisement poster stretching from the ceiling all the way to the floor. The advertisement looked like it had been hung there for quite some time. The blue and red colors had seemingly faded significantly, and everything just about a kind of had that older, for the lack of better word, to look for it. It was a blue poster dominated by a huge image of a bottle of Pepsi. The word Pepsi at the top of the, and the bottom uh, had a slogan that I had never seen anywhere else. Nothing else is a Pepsi. I never really thought much of it. It's just a small town, and therefore, there aren't going to be a ton of moviegoers, so that's why I can't deal with the upkeep of costs and six feet here, when it probably won't turn any profit. I'm sure the owners of the feeder need some economic reasoning behind their decision. One slow day at work, I was staring aimlessly at the poster, waiting for something to do, when I noticed a small bulge on the right side of it. It was barely noticeable, something you would almost have to be looking for in order to see. But for the first time since I started working at the feeder, it crossed my mind and something more than ever just blank wall in fact, it might be behind the poster. I went over to it and felt a small indication, and to my amazement, it felt like a doorknob. Not just any doorknob, the same type of doorknob on the doors on the other five feet ears. I pulled back the poster to look behind it, and sure enough, it was a door. Tons of questions raced through my mind, but I eventually concluded that neglecting to use the other feet ear was probably just an economic-based decision. As I figured that the door was locked, so I didn't get to go see inside. Still, my curiosity wouldn't go, go away. Why I had never heard of this? Well, why was the door covered with a poster? Did the door even have a six feet here? I decided to ask my own, the owner, Kevin. Kevin was 12 years older than me, and he was about 30 at the time, and also worked at the cinema when he was in high school. His father used to own the cinema, but it had been passed down to Kevin once he graduated from college. Nothing, it's just the wall, he repeated hastily. When I asked him about what was behind the Pepsi poster, Kevin, I saw the door. He looked at me for a couple of seconds and then let out a sigh. Okay, come over here, he said, as he led me away from the crowd of people. You can never tell the story to any of our customers, got it? Yeah, sure, just tell me what happened. I said anxiously. Then he proceeded to tell me one of the particular nights on the weekend, after Thanksgiving, when he was a senior in high school. Toy Story had come out a few weeks earlier, and it had been shown in Feeder 6 that night. Oddly enough, I haven't seen Toy Story. I was five, almost six, when it came out, so I'm pretty sure that I'm the only person from my generation who never went to go see it. I was supposed to go one night with a group of friends from kindergarten and their parents, but I was sick with the flu and my parents wouldn't let me go. Anyway, something apparently went wrong that night. Kevin told me about how he remembered the faces of the kids when they came out of the feeder, saying they appeared to be somewhat a trance-like state, and they all were white as ghosts. He also said that overheard that some of the parents 
making comments like, I thought this was supposed to be a kid's movie, and others and saying other things along those lines. It was the last showing of the Knights Figure 6, a good thing it was some of the kids had, and parents had torn the con cotton out of some of the seats and had thrown things at the screen, damaging it. They closed the feed year for the next few days, and since there were a lot of repairs that had to be done for it to be suitable for another showing anytime soon. However, they never got around to fixing it and decided to shut down the feed year for, for good, given what happened to North English soon after. Over the next couple of weeks, Kevin told me that there was a rash of a child disappearances throughout this area. Their names and pictures were written on the paper, and I just about lost my lunch when I saw who they were, Kevin explained. I recognized they were pretty much kids' very faces, he said. They were the ones that had to come out of the feeder that night. According to Kevin, none of the kids were never found, dead or alive. Nice story, bro, I chuckled. Now tell me what really happened. Don't believe me? I don't blame you, Kevin said. But come take a look at this. He then proceeded to take me to his office and pulled up a web page on his computer. It showed me a picture of a young blonde girl with dark brown eyes about upper elementary age. Under the picture read, Karen Wilson, born August 11th, 1985, hometown North English, Iowa, last seen November 29th, 1995. Status, still missing. This is a database I found online that tracks the missing kids, Kevin told me. He then showed me the, how he filtered the next results on this site. North English for the town, 1995 for the year. He clicked on next button to reveal a picture of a blonde haired girl, this time a bit younger. Leah Holleniker, er, February 1st, 1988, hometown, North English, Iowa, last seen, November 29th, 1995, status, still missing. When Kevin clicked on the next button again, I froze, this face I recognized, Kyle Sheely, Lee, born March 18th, 1990, hometown, North English, Iowa, last seen, November 30th, 1995, status, still missing. Kyle was one of the friends I was planning to see Toy Story with. My parents never told me he had to move schools and, as a kindergartner at the time, I never second-guessed anything they said. Then my stomach dropped, and it finally hit me. Jeff, Justin, and Aaron, the other three kids who went to see Toy Story that night, had also moved away. As Kevin scrolled up for the other missing kids, 12 in total, there were, were Jeffrey Bates, October 5th, 1989, North English, Iowa, last seen, December 2nd, 1995, status still missing, Justin Weber, June 13th, 1990, hometown, North English, Iowa, last seen, December 7th, 1995, status still missing, Aaron McPhee, April 3rd, 1990, hometown, North English, Iowa, last seen December 8th, 1995, status still missing. Panic started to set in. Everything inside of me felt cold. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and I ran to the bathroom, certain that I was about to get sick. I ended up being such able to calm myself down, but I didn't sleep much during the next few nights. About a week later, I still couldn't get it out of my mind. It was a very busy night at work, and it was opening weekend for the fifth Harry Potter movie, so I decided that I was going to it. I was going to enter Feeder 6. They did fee fee send a few extra workers, staff, to clean up the Feeder after the lost Har last Harry Potter showing was over. About five minutes into the cleanup, I told them that I will go, go home and that I'll take care of the rest. They all thanked me, packed up, and went home for the night. My night, however, was just beginning. Once I finished cleaning up Feeder 2, where Harry Potter was being shown, I headed over towards the North Hallway and stared down at the Pepsi poster. After checking to make sure no one else was around, in sight, I reached into my pocket to grab a paper clip, and I brought back to pick the lock. Picking locks wasn't my anything new to me. 
When you grow up in a small town like North English, you and your buddies are always looking up for something to do. Well, I guess here's a story of a different time. For some flingling around, it worked. I took a deep breath and turned the doorknob and opened the door. Another thing getting hit was a gust of cold air. The first thing I noticed was the small smell. Instead of smelling like a weird mixture of popcorn and lemon-scented cleaner like the other feeders, this one had, as you expect, a damp, musty smell. Mice and rats had clearly been in the feeders based on the smell, which kind of grossed me out since people just across the hallway watched movies, ate popcorn, and drank soda every night, and I was one of the people in charge of keeping the place clean. As I turned on my flashlight, sure enough, the feeder was a mess. The screen was still cracked from having assorted objects thrown at it the night, just like Kevin had told me. As far as the seats, they were all torn up. However, I couldn't tell if the majority of them were destroyed by those moviegoers or by mice and rats. I still had goosebumps, and I was a little freaked out. But after some inspection of the feeder, I couldn't find anything overjoyingly terrifying. I decided to walk up to the top of the steps and check out the control booth. It looked just like any other five control booths. Clearly, we hadn't made any renovations of any of them since the mid-90s or before. I always thought the technology seemed a little outdated in the feeder of this. Pretty much confirms it. After looking around the cobweb-riddled sound and the light controls, I noticed to my horror there's a roll of the film labeled Toy Story and another roll of the film. This one, unmarked, was the one real. And that, my little pretties, was Feed Year 6, a creepypasta written by The Rick List. Uh, my final thoughts on the story? I would have to definitely say this is actually a really good creepypasta. It's actually one of those creepypastas that actually managed to do something really fun and amazing. Now, I'm going to sit here and say this right now. This story called, um, you could probably say, uh, Feed Year 6 is a pretty good um, creepypasta. I mean, I've heard of this narration um, from Shadow, I believe, back in 2018, or maybe it was 2017 or something. I can't remember, but I remember Shadow actually ring, well, narrated this story at one point on his old channel. And I actually watched, um, oh, what's it? Oh, yeah. I actually watched Rebecca Bu 122. And I actually uh, heard the narration from the formidable robot, which I have to say, it's a pretty interesting creepypasta for what it is. Like, I mean, the kids are going, have gone missing, you know, all of a sudden, and there's like no explanation. I mean, and this Toy Story one seemed to be pretty, um, like pretty interesting for what this one really is. Now, I'm going to sit here and say this right now, that I think this story actually portrayed pretty good concept for what this one really is. I mean, I honestly can see that this is honestly, it's a pretty good creepypasta involving something around Toy Story. Now, I, a theory basically is the kids go missing after they saw the Toy Story movie and they shut down while well, Feeder 6 do too well. The disappearances of the kids and all that. I have a feeling they must have gotten murdered or something. I think that's might have been what happened exactly. But I really don't know to be completely honest. Because that honestly really, really confuses me. But it also questions me on what actually happened to them. Like that's actually a very good question when it came to this story. Now I'm really glad I got the time to narrate this story. Because I, hadn't narr I haven't read this story in like a while. I believe the last time I did was uh, when one when one of my fans actually sent me a link to the story. I actually decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and have a read at this. And I mean, it's a pretty good one. So, I mean, it's a really good story for what it is. I really do like this story. It's, I mean, the grammar of this is really good along with the sentence structuring, the storyline. Basically, everything about it was flat out awesome. Like, I mean, I really do find this one to be a pretty interesting concept for what this is. I mean, 
I could really undersee this being the case. I mean, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty something. Like, it is obvious of how good this, um, story really is. I've seen, um, a couple, few narrations of this story, and I really hope Shadow, you know, decides to re-narrate this story someday soon, because I honestly really liked this story. And this is on a Creepypasta website, and I recommend you guys check this story out if you haven't. It's a, it's a good one, I'm not gonna lie. You guys will not be disappointed once you, um, have seen this. And I actually was thinking about narrating this one, you know, when as soon as it got linked to me, but I just got busy, I didn't have time, and finally I decided to have the chance to sit there and narrate this story. And I recommend you guys go check this story out too. You'll not be disappointed. It's a classic creepypasta. I know it's not too much Toy Story related, but it did mention Toy Story in there. I mean, this is actually a pretty believable creep pasta for what it is. I mean, the disappearances of the kids, I actually have a fury. I think maybe they must have got murdered after seeing the move Toy Story movie or something. Or I'm not really sure exactly what happened because it didn't really explain it, but that's just basically what I think personally. If you guys want to have other furies that you want to share, you know, what your thoughts on, you know, what could happen, what if could have happened to the kids and all that, Feel free to let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below because I like to hear um, what your thoughts are on it because, you know, I like to see um, what your thoughts and opinions on it. So, I mean, the grammar of the story is pretty good as well as the sentence structuring, the storyline. I really do appreciate how beautifully well written this one was. It wasn't, you know, cliched mess left, right, and center. I mean... I, I mean, it's a worth to read if you are a fan of creepypastas or if you want to look for some good pastas in general. I recommend you check out this one. And I don't know if anyone else is interested in narrating this story. I really recommend you guys check out this story. It's not on a regular creep. It's not on the Creepypasta Wiki. It's on our Creepypasta website. I might um, put a link in description down below if I could remember. If not, I'll figure out a way to, you know, link down the stories, so then that way you guys would have a chance to take a look at it. So, I guess with that being said, I don't have really thing, anything negative to say, but I would have to say, would it be possible if the kids were either dead or still missing? I mean, I would like more explanation to, you know, what happened to the kids who saw Toy Story. I mean, that's just me, but yeah, you guys can... Have your own theories. If you have your own theories on it, feel free to. Because I would like to hear what your theories are on it. Now, anyways, with that being the case, with that being said, I'm going to sit here and say this. Like I'm going to say, this is simply my own personal opinion. You happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these um, creepypastas. And this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final reign of this story would have to be a... I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 10. It's a beautifully well-written creepypasta. Very original for what it is. It's a really amazing story. It's worth a read if you are a fan of creepypastas. And if you do have, like, theories on what happened to the people who watched Toy Story in Feeder 6 and why the kids gone missing or something, I would like to hear what your theories and thoughts on that in the comments below. Feel free to, you know, share them. You don't have to share them if you don't want to, but if you want to go ahead and, you know, express what happened in your thoughts and opinions, that's perfectly okay. And like I said, we have our own opinions. Anyways, what did you guys think about this curry pasta? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done person to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now with your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode, and if you're brand new here to this channel... Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.